I'm gonna show you everything about the Ninja Trader platform so you'll be able to read your charts and consistently execute profitable trades. This video is gonna start from the basics of how to set up your chart exactly how you want, and I'll show you all the little tricks that I've learned over the years of using this platform. A lot of the videos out there are just old or give a really basic overview, and understanding all these little tips and tricks are really gonna help you unlock the power of this trading platform. So for the first time opening up Ninja Trader, you're gonna have just this window right here. And what you're gonna have to do that what is different to other platforms is you have to go to connections up here and you're gonna have to configure your connection. Now this is gonna depend on if you're getting your data from Ninja Trader or just all the other options that they have here. Now if you're getting it from Ninja Trader, I get mine from the Ninja Trader Continuum. Maybe this has changed based on where they're at now but you're gonna get details from them on how to do that. And so when you set all that up, you're gonna just be able to configure for it to connect every time. And when you connect, you're gonna have a couple colors from the dots here. Red is you're not connected, there's something wrong. Yellow is you're connecting and green is you are connected. And then the gray before is there's nothing happening. And then when you connect, you're gonna have two accounts. You're gonna have your SIM trading account here and your real account here. And so to edit your SIM trading account, you just right click and you can edit account. You can either reset this account to start it over, or you can just change the initial amount that you have in it. You can also add the commissions structure that you are using. So it can match a live account as real as possible because commissions are a part of trading. And then of course you have your real account here as well. And so you, you don't have as much stuff you can really edit here. You can change the fees on there. That's just, to reflect in their system because their system doesn't actually calculate on the platform, but you can try and change it to make it as reflective as the real thing as possible. Now, if you right click anywhere on here and go to properties, you can change all the stuff that is shown up here in all the columns. So there's a ton of stuff you can show here. I don't really like showing a lot of this stuff because I like to take away the results and the account size, because I don't like to think about that when I'm trading. I think it's not good to be seeing how much your account is up or down all the time when you're trading. It's best to just not focus on that stuff, but that's how you change that stuff. And then you have other tabs down here that'll show your orders, if you took any orders, and your current positions, and then any other logs and messages that you have. Now, when you're actually connecting NinjaTrader, you have other data fee options and so if i just quickly pull up the ninja trader website this is where you'll do it you'll go to your settings and account plans up here and then you can just change your market data and so either you can use the main one that just costs 12 dollars a month and gets you everything or you can click this customize button and it will bring up every different market you can subscribe to and for less money if you don't need everything now I never know what these things have really. Just click view all products and it will tell you exactly what it shows and what it gives you when you subscribe. And so the CME, that gives the ES futures, the NASDAQ, a lot of different other ones. And so that's really what you can subscribe to right away and you know anything else that you might want. Now, if you ever have any questions, I would always reach out to Ninja Trader support. They're actually pretty helpful with answering specific questions. Now up here, you have some other tabs to open an actual chart now, just go to new up here and then go to chart. And that'll bring up a couple settings here. Just go to, you might not have right here, this is your most recent ones. You might not have any of those, just go to futures and then you know choose whatever you're trying to look at. And so we'll just open up the ES. That's what the market is currently trading on. So this number right here, that's the expiration date. Yours might be different than this number, the more current expiration date. And then from here, you can just change all the chart settings. You can change minute values, chart, this value right here for a minute chart. This would be saying it's a one minute chart. You can change that to a five minute chart and then you can load data. And so here I like to load a lot of days because it allows you to scroll back a ton. It doesn't really take that much data up on your computer. So we can just load 80 days. And then a lot of this other stuff is pretty either you don't really need to touch it or it's pretty self-explanatory. You can change the colors of your candlesticks, the outlines, and all this stuff, if I just click OK, it'll bring up our chart. All of those settings, you can also access right here, clicking this data series button at the top of the chart. It'll bring up all those settings again. And so you can go back and change stuff if you want. And so just to make this full screen, you can double click on it, the top. And so here's our chart. And so quickly, just to move things around, you can just click and drag. That'll usually just go back and forth. It, it will lock it. 
and then to you know compress and expand you can drag the axes and if i on a pc hold the left control on the axes you can also drag them that way and then up here at the top left you'll see an f and an arrow if i click the f it'll reposition everything properly and so if you're way off the chart it'll snap you back to making it so the chart is always in the screen and then you see this distance right here you can make that go away by clicking that arrow now if that distance like there is something you like you can actually right click on the chart go to properties and then right side margin right here you can increase that let's just put it at 300 that'll increase it and make this your right side margin so then you can click the arrow back and this will always be there even if you click the arrow and so that will allow you to have kind of that space between the side of the chart if you like to see that for drawings and everything now at the top left here is all your basic settings you can do we can change it to a one minute chart or you can configure any other random ones they don't have here by default and then here are all your other settings you can change your candlesticks drawing tools this is where you'll find all your drawing tools you can click up we can draw a line here and then you have other settings here that we'll go over in a minute. Now to go over a couple more drawing settings, if you right click and go to properties, you can scroll down and you can remove, if you just don't like grid lines, you just can click visibility off and that'll remove them. And now another setting for horizontal grid lines is if I right click on the Y axis and go to properties, you can change your horizontal grid lines, what they're based off of. So naturally it's set to automatic and you can change this to fixed. And so initially, if I hit apply and OK, every grid line will be one point of value. And so in the ES, one point is just one, you know, numeric going from 72 to 73. That is one point of value in this market. And then you can go to change it to ticks as well, or they even have pips for Forex. And so this makes it so every tick is one line. And so that makes it super easy to visually see one tick and so you can see the market just flopping right between the ticks and so that's a really helpful change that you can add with your horizontal grid lines now another thing is if you right click you can find a lot of these settings on the right click properties as well and so you can find drawing tools right here if i just go and let's take a trend line channel for instance you click it and then clicking on the chart and then you can click and drag it and you can move it around how you want based on whatever you're seeing and you can double click on it or right click on it to bring up your properties. And so this goes for any drawing tool is you can change it to either be go on your specific chart or this setting means it's gonna be on all ES futures charts of that contract expiration. And so it'll, it'll go across multiple charts if you have multiple on different screens. And then you can change if you want to have the box filled you can change it by doing that this is what this opacity does you can remove that the whole visibility of it and then you can also just change the you know the colors of the grid lines or how thick they are and then another thing is what you'll see everywhere is the bottom right corner if you click on template that it says right here you can click save and so you can save your settings either as a custom name that you make up or you can click save as default. And so if you click save as default, it'll replace the current default. And then if you go to drawing tools again and find channel, it'll have those exact settings every time. So this is how you don't have to change the settings every time. You can just have it exactly how you want. And so to go over some other settings up here, we can click the chart trader. And so that's, we'll go over that a little bit more in a minute, but that's how you bring up your active chart trader tab for when you're actually trading. And then you also have your indicators button up here. And so this is where you'll find all your indicators or your custom indicators if you download them. I have some custom indicators that I've made right here. And so you just double click, it'll add it to the chart. And then you can mess around with the settings, save it if you want, and then just add it to the chart. And so this will just put a little timer right here next to the candlestick that just counts down when the candlestick is done. And so a big thing is when you're creating these charts and making all your settings exactly how you want, a better way to do it instead of creating a new chart is right clicking on this and either duplicating in a new tab. You see now I have two down here or you can duplicate in a new window. And so that'll bring up just another window with all the exact same settings. And so you won't have to recreate all those things again. So, and so that'll really help when you have things set up exactly how you want. Now to quickly show you a couple features here is 
this top left button, you see these you see these two little gray squares here. You can link your charts together. So if I click here and I click red and I click here and click red again, is anytime I do something on this chart, it'll do it on that chart as well. Now this is different from if we double click on our drawing and the setting here that makes it go across all charts. And so this allows you to target exactly where you wanna do things. And then there's a second option to do here as well. If you wanna link multiple across different ones. And so that's a really nice setting to do if you want to have multiple things across your charts. Now, one thing that was really frustrating about these new tabs down here is you can easily click this X button away. And so right now I have the setting to where it asks you or prompts you to close that. And so to change that, just go to your main Ninja Trader window, go to tools up here, go to options, and then just under general, it's the first thing here to check this box. And so check that box will make it so it asks you to confirm anytime you click close a window, it'll confirm. And it's really nice because just switching on your tabs down here, very easy to accidentally hit that X button. Now, one thing that is really, really helpful with Ninja Trader is if you go to tools here, there is hotkeys. And so what you can do with hotkeys is you have hotkeys for just about everything. And so what it allows you to do is mainly I use it for drawing tools. If we scroll down here, you go to drawing tools, you have all these hotkeys that they already put in by default, but you can go in here and change them. So for like something like drawing lines, I have here as F2. And so if I just go onto a chart and I just click F2 on my keyboard, it brings up my drawing tool line that I can just easily draw without having to go up here, drawing tools and find it. So it makes it a lot quicker. Now there's also actually entry hotkeys in here that you can use as well to enter in orders via hotkeys. That is one way to quickly enter orders if you want. Now, a big thing is how do you save everything? And so I actually just goofed this up while I was filming. And so what you wanna do is you need to click save on one of these here. And so if you just click save, it'll save it under that name. And so every time you open Ninja, Ninja Trader, you can set it as your default and it will open up your charts exactly like that every time. If you click new here, it'll restart everything from scratch. And so that's how you can rebuild a new one, but that is, will also wipe away what you were just working on. And so, but here you can reopen these up once you have saved them. And so it'll allow you to easily populate your charts how you want every time. Now, one thing that is really helpful is if you are ever unsure about something, if you just click F1 on the tab, it'll open up a help window on the internet through Ninja Trader. And so I just clicked that basically the help F1 hotkey on the accounts tab and it opens up the help on the accounts tab. If I click this chart and I click it, it'll open it up for the charts. And so it'll allow you to, anytime you're not sure about something or wanna look at you know settings or anything, it'll open that up for you. And that is really, really helpful for finding that. What else? Mm. Probably the mo most powerful thing about Ninja Trader is their chart trader tab. And so it's a little confusing when you first start out. Now, this is how you will be able to enter in your trades. And so what this does when you first bring it up just like this is it allows you when you right click on the chart, you can now see that it'll bring up these options. And so what this does, if I click buy limit one here, it'll put in a buy order right there. And so how you control that number is this, that here's your order quantity. And so, and then from there you can just click and drag. And so if I want to, you know, move my order here, I can, if I want to try and get filled on that order, I can move it up to the current price and try and keep moving. And then you can see right there, it will fill that order. And it says text here, you bought at this number. And so this text right here, if you go up to your data settings, you can remove this or change it. And so I can just have the little marker, the little arrow, or I can not have that shown if I don't want that shown. And so that is another way to helpfully do that. Now, if I want to manually add a stop loss, you can do that by right clicking and say stop loss. And so if the market comes down there, it'll knock that out. We can move that up here. 
and essentially get filled on that and the market will then close out your trade. Now, this is a really simple way to do it that I hate and I don't know if anyone really does. Really the power comes from your at the money strategy orders. And so you won't have any of these when you first start out. These are ones I've made. And so what you need to do is click custom and it will bring up this tab. Now again, you can click F1 here to bring up the help because there's a lot of confusing stuff on this. So what this does is it allows you to input essentially what's called an OCO order. And so what that means is when you enter in a trade right here, you can have it enter in a stop loss immediately or a profit target immediately. And so you can change your parameter type based on what you're trading. And so we have to do it based on ticks. I think that's the best way to do it because that adjusts for whatever mark you're trading. You can't do points, sadly. And so you can change how many targets you want. And so we're trading one contract, so we're just gonna do one target. And so you can initially input your stop loss in. I'm just gonna do a 20 tick stop loss. And so that's gonna be a four point stop loss. And then we can set our profit target at 20 points or 20 ticks as well. And then if you wanna add more complicated things, you can. You can add a stop strategy. If you go to custom here, you can make it so you can basically create a trailing stop loss. And so it'll trigger based off of how many points your thing comes into profit. And so you can say, oh, well, if it gets 20 picks in my profit, I want it to activate this trailing stop loss that I have set up here. And so, or, or you can have, you know, any other different type of settings here. I don't use any of those, but they're there if you want. Now, if you have multiple contracts, you can add another target. Now, remember that this means you have essentially two orders. And so what you need to do is you need this number up here to match the total down here. And so we would have to change this to a two to match the number of quantity down here. And so we'll just keep it simple though at one at the moment. And so again, you can save this. And I always would save this at something you know i like to save it as something that makes sense like this is a five contract order with a one to three risk reward ratio and so that kind of is how i remember it and then if you click ok it'll pop up here and so then what you can do is i'll just click buy market and it will enter in an order and you can see now our profit target is there and our stop loss is there and they will be exactly four points away from where you entered and then you can always click and drag based on however you want now, one thing is what you can do is right click anywhere over here and you can, you know, there's a couple other settings here, but properties is important. One thing is this first setting up here. I always always suggest doing this third option that keeps selected because if you do display, it'll actually remove. It comes up with a warning here. It'll remove those targets and you can't see them anymore. And then this one will actually kind of change it when you enter in an order. And so this one always keeps it selected. So if you enter in one trade, I can enter in another and it will do the exact same thing. And so what that allows you to do is, you know, it'll always keep this one selected for you, which I think is the best way to do things. Now, another thing is here are just a couple random settings. You can change how far this comes out on the screen, this line, all the lines really. And then as well is you can just change the display units. And so what this does is you can you can change it to currency. And so right here, this is how you can change it to show how much money you're up and down. And you can change it to pips. You can change it to none. I personally show none on my actual screens. On my recordings, you'll see an actual dollar value there, but I hide it because I always think you don't want to be focusing on the money when you're trading, right? And so that's one way I really do that. And then another thing I actually do is I change the colors of my profit and stop loss to white because again, it takes the emotions out of trading. Green being a good emotion and red being a bad emotion, having the, you know, oh, it's red, it's bad, it's coming towards where I don't want, you know, that it's more likely to trigger emotions. And so those are settings I like to do. I actually change the colors of my candlesticks as well to be blue and white because those are again, more calming colors. And so one thing really frustrating about Ninja Traders active trader tab is entering in orders quickly. Now, I like to enter in really right when a candlestick closes. And so trying to enter in here sometimes can be hard to do. And so one thing I have found really helpful that I've created is if we go to indicators here and I'll just add this. 
is it's a click trader. And so other platforms have this. I have no clue why Ninja Trader doesn't have this, but what it does is it allows you to essentially have a hotkey and click entering into the chart very rapidly. And so when things are moving quick, it really helps with that. And also one thing that happens if, if you're lick, trying to enter in at the current price, sometimes you'll see is it will get rejected. And so I'm trying to enter in with a buy stop here. And if it's below price, that'll get rejected if the price moves so quickly. And so if we, if I just try and show that, if I click buy stop above the current price and the current price actually goes above that value, it will actually reject that order. And so you see, I tried to fill there and it, it rejected me. And so when the market's moving quickly, that is really, really frustrating. And so what this thing does is it will, it will input actually a secondary order. It'll input a market if touched order. And you can see that right here, just an MIT that's a called. And so that's something that I've found really, really useful with trading on the Ninja Trader platform. That's just a really quality of life upgrade. Now, when you're using Ninja Trader, a really powerful thing is your custom indicators that you can install. To install a custom indicator, usually they'll give you a zip file and then you just go to tools up here in your main platform and just go to import in the Ninja script add-on. And then you will, you know, wherever you put the zip file, you'll just add that in here. And then wherever that file is, you just install it. And then to find it, generally, if it's an indicator, just go to indicators up here. And then a lot of time you'll either find it in here as a custom name, or there'll be a folder at the top if you have multiple installed. Now, one thing that Ninja Trader doesn't do good is their risk reward drawing tool. And so right here, I have created a custom one. And if you go and click and drag, and so what it does is it tells you how many contracts you need to trade to fit a certain risk amount. And so for me, if I just double click it here, I my risk is at $600 per trade. And so what it does is if I just add the risk reward here, it'll tell you how many contracts you need to trade to based on where your stop is gonna be located and then where you're gonna enter based on those parameters. And so here to hit around close, it, it does it roughly to hit 612 in terms of risk, I need to trade seven contracts. And then it will put up here actually how much you'll make if it hits, you know, one times, two times, or three times your risk, it'll show, you know, you're going to make $1,800 here at 3x. And so that's how I trade because I enter based on candlesticks and then put stop losses below levels. And so that's how I like to do that. And then you can add or, or, or change things in here. There's a couple settings. I, I won't get into it too much, but that is something that I found really, really beneficial for entering in your trades because otherwise calculating how much you want to put in on every trade is kind of complicated. And when the market again is moving quickly, isn't easy to do quickly. So a cool thing that you can do is you can actually play back data and days if you want. So if you wanna go and play back a day, just go to connections up here and go to playback, and then it'll just bring up download data. And so just go to whatever market you're wanting to do. And then if we just wanna play back yesterday, you can click download and it will download the data. And then what you wanna do is you go to market replay up here, click on whatever market you just downloaded and then find the date. And so here we have 12, three to 12, four, and we click continue. And then what you need to remember is you actually have to close out your other connections. And so we can just go here, disconnect and then play back and redo that. Clearly, I don't know everything about Ninja Trader off the top of my head and then just continue it from there. And so from there, it'll bring up a little box here. Make sure you click on market replay data. If you just did one day, don't just do day to day. Make sure you do the day before and then click play and then it'll set things up for you. And then what you can do here is you can either change the playback speed and then this is your bar for changing how it played out. And so what we can do is if we go to you know, when the market's open, let's say 635, that's when the market opens for me. Generally it's 930, but then it will play back the data. And you can see here, you can play it and you can also pause it. And then this is a minute chart, but again, remember it's 4X. And so it'll go a lot quicker. And so that's how you play back data. And then from there, you can pretty much just do anything you want, like a, a normal chart. And so what we can do here is if you go to new, you can actually go to trade performance. And so you can bring up your trade performance over previous times. And so what you can do here is if you click on this little filter, if you wanna make sure you're looking at one account. And so if we just look at my main account here and then you can change what you're looking at. And so this will just say, okay, I'm looking at futures. You can change what templates you're looking at. This is your at the money template. 
and then it'll just show you how much you're up. It'll, it'll give you a ton of data here. Now, the only problem with this is a lot of the times your data can be corrupt. And so I lose this data all the time. And so if we just go to last month, essentially the month of November, as you can see, okay, here I am up $4,000 for the month. And that's actually not true because if you, well, you can actually go here as well. You can analyze and it will show you actually a chart. And that's because it only shows the last three trades I took that month. And so on NinjaTrader, actually, if you go to your account here and go to statements, you can pull up either your live or demo and you can go to performance. And so if we go to last month, it'll bring up your actual performance of the month. Now, the, the stuff in the NinjaTrader platform, that's theoretical. It's generally pretty dang accurate, but it doesn't take into account your commissions, your fees and anything else. And so this is where you can see I actually lost my data for that that last month. My, actually, last month I was up close to $10,000. And then here you can see all of the trades and again, more data. And then you can also go to this year, last year, custom dates. And so that's one thing that's really helpful about NinjaTrader. It's really cool that they have it on this platform, but it sucks that for me, at least, I find that the data gets corrupted a lot of the time, especially trying to upgrade and update the system. Now, if you wanna see the strategy I used on NinjaTrader to make close to $10,000 last month, this video right here will walk you through a step-by-step -step tutorial of that strategy I use every day.